So we did show this uh, previously, and yeah, it's been in development for a while, but we wanted to make sure we get the workflow right uh, before we really send this out to a broader, broader market. And what we have tried to do is make it so that you can take transcription into your workflow at the very start of the editing process, before you've even got anything on the timeline. So the idea is that you've got your event. In this case, it's all sync clips as well. We've got some nice interviews here, people talking about what they would say to their younger self. So what I can do is take the, uh, I actually want to dump all of these into our tool here, which is the Scribomatic application. And you can drag an event in, you can drag a project in, you can bring in files from the finder, and you'll see the transcript start to appear in this window on the right. Now, you can't edit it while it's transcribing, not yet. Some people have asked us for that. Now, the accuracy will, of course, depend on how clean the audio is. We do recommend that it's separate audio with a lav mic. Um, obviously, you can't have it mixed with music or anything, even you know, crowd noise, background noise. It'll still work, but your uh, accuracy will go down. With clean audio, you're getting about 90 95%. Now, with the interface, we're still going to do a lot of work on the user interface, but the idea is you're going to be able to click on, on any word here, or sorry, click on a sentence. It jumps to that part of a clip. You can play it back. If it doesn't match, you can just edit it here before you send it back to Final Cut Pro. And uh, one of the other things which also you know is that Apple just announced the new support for closed captions. We will be supporting their formats, ITT and CEA 608. Um, we don't, obviously don't have that just yet, but you'll be able to use this to generate those caption files and then load that into Final Cut Pro where it will treat it as a separate metadata layer. So you have access to it and then you can still edit it inside Final Cut Pro, switch them on and off, put multiple language transcripts on. I do have multiple options at the moment how I want to send it back to Final Cut Pro. You can send back markers with the transcription attached to markers at, at the time code. You can send back um, keyword ranges attached to notes. Um, or you can send back uh, titles at the moment. So that, that would be if you want to burn in the transcript for some reason. You're giving it to uh, a uh, producer or for additional notes. The speed will also depend, of course, on your internet connection. Unfortunately, here there's not such a fast connection. So Now, also, um, this will handle, like I said, you can drop a project into it. You can drop a project of sync clips. You can drop uh, an event of sync clips, an event of, of um, attached audio clips, an event of WAV files. Um, and we also have the ability to build a project based on the sentences of the transcription <laughs> So I'll build a timeline, swap clips around the timeline, and then send that back to Final Cut Pro as well. So we've tried to cover a lot of workflows already. That's why it's been uh, in internal alpha for a while, well, a very long time. This actually, the reason why this saves you so much time or is so useful is because in the browser, before you've got anything on the timeline, you can then search for clips and then go directly to the nearest couple of seconds where they're saying that word which is what I'll, I'll show you as soon as this is... Ah, there we go. So, OK, that's finished. Now, I've got multiple ways of sending that back. Like I said, a transcription uh, I can choose from here, markers, uh, notes ranges, or titles if you wanted to burn it in for some reason. And yes, that's where the um, ability to save as captions will come, will come in. So, now I'm going to send that back as... Uh, transcription. Now I'm going to put it into a new library. I could go into the same library and overwrite the clips, but just for the purposes of this, I'm just going to put it into a new, new library. OK. Right, so now you can see all the, the keyword ranges we've got set on those clips. And this is the magic part, is I can go into this view. I can look at my transcribe and see where they say, uh, uh, actually, here then one thing you do, just have to open the event and click on the transcribe keyword here. Then I can just search for, actually, and it will come up with where that's said. You can see it here, and then I can just click and play. So I'll show you that part of it, just to show you the uh, ability to bring in a sync project. 
which I can double click on it here to show you. Yep, drag that whole project in. And again, you can see Scribematic has brought it in. Um, I would then group it and press this the whole project and you'd get back the markers or the keyword ranges the same as that. Um, I'm happy to give anyone a more detailed demo next door after this, but now I'm gonna show you our top secret product that's coming very soon. So what we have here, now at the moment it's not a plugin. It will be a plugin, this is just a, uh, just for the development turnaround time makes it much faster for us to do it as a separate app like this. So literally what this is, is draw a paint stroke, hit the track button. So if you're doing any kind of uh, finishing work, touch up work, you wanna say get rid of a, a satellite dish on a roof and you can just clone over it, but it's easier to basically just actually paint the clone brushes rather than having to draw masks. Or in some cases, with, uh, you might need to actually make a still image in Photoshop, but now this will be everything on the timeline in Final Cut. Just paint whatever you need and track it. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to my color brush and choose a nice deep purple because we're gonna make it look like he has a black eye. Okay, so I'm going to go to my brush here, bigger size, some nice softness. Now, of course, that looks horrible. So we've got a blend mode here, which we can change down to darken, and then we can also change the alpha. Right now, in this case, I would also need to change the color of the stroke even darker until we start getting something that looks you know, a little bit realistic. We'll toggle that on and off. <coughs> and then literally, track. So that is also using, of course, the Mocha Tracker, like our other products that we have licensed from our good friends at Imagineer. Let's give you another example. Now, currently we have uh, the color brush with the different blend modes. We have blur, uh, sharpen, smear, warp, and clone. So I'm gonna show you guys the warp brush because that's quite fun and it's something you can't do with uh, other sorts of tracking products. So let's have the close up on, on the little girl. Okay, now reset that. So unfortunately, you often get asked to do things like make someone's arms look slimmer, you know, make, the, make the change of their body in some way. Let's have a more fun example, which is if we wanted to make her look a bit more like a alien child, you would literally like, okay, let's, let's like pinch this and you know, give a really high arching, whoop, that's too much. Put her, bring her nose in to make it look more kind of strange. Right, I can toggle that on and off. Hit the track button. And that's following the motion. So I didn't have to pick any track points, I didn't have to draw a shape. And in the plugin version, you will have different tracking for different brush strokes, which at the moment we're not doing. Um, you will have that. You will also have some other tools, like a heel brush, like they have in, in Photoshop, where you basically you clone the texture, but then you take the uh, brightness and saturation from the target area. And you can do some amazingly uh, <coughs> complicated cleanups really quickly with that. So yes, you will have to, you know, practice with it a little bit because you know, using the, doing this type of paint is, is actually a little bit of a skill, but we'll have plenty of examples. And uh, we will have, of course, discounts for anyone that already has any of our, of our products, which we usually do. And lastly, please come to see me because we have a sale at the moment, 30% off all plugins, but you need the coupon that's on the flyer I have. And I'm also happy to um, answer any questions, let you look at this in more detail, and I'm at the Super Meet tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.